Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. Then we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. This week, we are looking at passages that relate to the pastoral ministry, since we are going to be installing uh, a, a new pastor here at St. John's in Maguanago. We talked about the connection between pastor as shepherd, the under-shepherd to the good shepherd. We talked about uh, this kind of rare concept but the idea of father that should be in the back of our mind, pastor as a spiritual father. Last time we talked about him being preacher and teacher and how those things are actually kind of different and yet they're both needed um, in the pastoral office. Today we're going to talk about the fragility of the pastoral ministry and I'm thinking about a passage um, from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 4. This is a longer section, but I'll read it. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. This is a passage, a section of scripture, I should say, that is near and dear to the hearts of pastors, and you can see why. First of all, we talk about the ministry as Christ's ministry. It always bothered me when someone said, your ministry or my ministry. I didn't understand that as if it was simply a career that's not how you should look at your career either. It's, it's God's love through you and your vocations to other people. But it's certainly the, the, sake, uh, the case when it comes to the pastoral ministry. It's not my ministry. It's not Pastor Bordelin's ministry. It's not Pastor Bodie's ministry. It's Christ's ministry. And it's just an honor to be a part of this. And because it is Christ's ministry, this is quite relieving to pastors um, who are fragile clay jars. It is quite re relieving to understand that it, the, all of this is in God's hands and we do nothing but here give the gospel. And if the gospel is veiled to other people, that is their fault and it is God who does the veiling, as St. Paul says here on occasion as well, those who have rejected him. God sometimes rejects those people and hardens their hearts. That is something beyond us. My job is only to preach the gospel and to love. And even though it's a very difficult a very difficult thing. I understand that I have the sword of the Spirit. I have the Word of God. And as we said before, that connection between God's creative Word, let light shine in darkness, that's the same creative Word that shines light in the hearts of men through the Word of God. And so we have creative Word, we pastors. And yet, 
St. Paul is very clear to say, you pastors are nothing. He says, it's on purpose that God chose nothing men, jars of clay, so that this all surpassing power, the word of God has power, that this power is from God and not from his ministers. I think about one of the gifts of marriage being this, that you can have somebody who can remind you that you're not all that and still love you. It's one of the blessings of marriage to keep you humble. And the marriage between Christ under shepherd, the pastor, and his people, the congregation, works the same way. It's actually a blessing that sometimes pastors are taken down a notch by their people. It's actually a good thing if they love them. It's good for a pastor to remind himself that he's not all that, that when he preaches, this is God's word and it's not his word. It's only a privilege to be a part of this. And as you as parishioners who have pastors who are fragile clay jars, that you remember that they are fragile clay jars, that you don't put your hope in them, in their talent, even their morality, that you don't look at them as the be-all and the end-all. This is Christ's ministry, not their ministry. And God tends to use men that maybe aren't that talented, that maybe not are the best speakers or the best teachers or the most charming or the most successful. Why? Well, St. Paul says it. We have this treasure in jars of clay. These, these orange clay jars that you get for 50 cents at Walmart, that if you, that if you drop, just shatter. These fragile clay jars, these ministers. God puts the treasure in, in the jars of clay so that the all-surpassing power we know is from God and not from them. So remind yourself of that when the pastor stumbles in his sermon or he makes a mistake. It's maybe a good thing so that you put your faith in God and not him. And it's also good for the pastor to remind himself of that, that this is Christ's ministry, not his ministry. And so it's not about him. He has a job. He has a job to proclaim Christ. That's the only qualification, finally. There's other qualifications, but that's the main one that he proclaims Christ crucified. If he's not doing that, that's the problem. It's a wonderful dichotomy that God has here that he puts this all-surpassing power, the creative word of God, into the most fragile clay jars. It's a beautiful thing. Your pastor has power, but it's not his power. The power comes from the creative word of God. He is a fragile clay jar, and that's a good thing. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you, be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We also pray. 
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.